Hello everyone, it is Ryan on the Syntax Byte, and in this video I'm going to show you how to save an Excel table to a JSON file. So my most popular video of all time on this channel, I think it was back in 2017, was showing you how to import a JSON file to an Excel table using a get and transform query. Now I'm not aware of such a simple easy graphical way to actually then save that table uh, as a JSON file, but I am going to show you how to do it with VBA today. Um, and we'll create something that's fairly clean. So if you just copy and paste the code, add a button, it'll provide a, a saving interface for you. Um, so stay tuned, even if you're not super technical with the coding. But the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we've saved our file as a macro file and that the data that we want to put into a JSON file is loaded as a table. Um, so that's going to be key here. Really what we're going to do is we're going to just have the JSON file look for the first table in the sheet. So you want to make sure there's only one table in your sheet. And then it'll pop up a save dialog and allow you to save it somewhere. Um, it's going to be a list of objects with the properties being the header row. Depending on what you're doing with this JSON file, it might be a good idea to go ahead and remove any spaces or, you know, whatever uh, from, from your header row. I'll leave that up to you. It won't break the file it might just make it more difficult for you to use later I'm gonna leave mine as is for now so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you save this file as an Excel macro file and so you're gonna click this drop down and go to XLSM and I'm gonna save this as a JSON saving file what we're gonna do now is go over to the developer tab now if you don't have the developer tab I believe you can somehow right click on the ribbon in this blank space and go customize the ribbon and then you might just have to click this box by developer okay and so if you don't have the developer tab that's how you enable it it should just pop right up there for you and then what you want to do is I'm gonna use a button to activate mine you could use any different uh, method you want uh, but I think a button is pretty clean and if you're going to be passing this off to a non-technical user, it's a good idea. I'm going to go ahead and use an ActiveX control. I'm going to draw a nice little button here uh, called Save um, Save as JSON. So we could go to click Properties then on that. I'm going to change the name, and we're going to go like uh, we're going to call it Save as JSON button. And then inside uh, the text, wherever that is, uh, we might just, I think we could just click on it and edit it somehow. Ah, caption, there we go. Okay. It's save as JSON. So we know what our button does. Perfect. We can go ahead and double click it, and that will open the VBA editor to the relevant. Uh, subroutine or I would call it a function but in VBA it's a subroutine so perhaps as an initial little litmus test here we might want to check that our button is working we make sure we've got the right thing so you could just do a message box and say hello world go ahead and save it if you just go back to Excel here and click the button you'll have to get out of design mode uh, and then you click the button and it says hello world. So cool, we got a button right on our Excel sheet. Maybe you didn't know you could do that. It says hello world. That's pretty fantastic. But what we actually want to have happen is it pops up a save box and lets us find a file to save our JSON to. And so how do we do that? Um, well, what we can do is we can do... Uh, we're going to get the save name and save it to a variable, save it in memory. We're going to do file save name equals application dot get save as file name. We're also going to pass it a file filter, which is going to specify the kind of file that we're going to save. So it's going to be JSON files. And this first little bit before the comma is going to be what's going to appear as the type. And then we need to actually just give it an extension. So it's going to be a JSON file. And this will ensure that it is a JSON file that we save. Now, 
It is possible for the user to cancel the dialogue, so we can check if they did by doing an if file save name is not equal to false. This means we'll only run the next code, and sorry, we do need then. So if file save name is not equal to false, then we'll say file number equals free file. Now what this is going to do is instead of using that name to refer to it, we need to, um, there's the system uses some sort of file number to refer to open files um, and free file will just give us the next available one. So that's sort of what that does. Um, so we'll say open file save name for output. We're going to output to the file. We're not going to read anything in from it as file number. So as that number. Then we can print. Uh, in the future, we will print our JSON code, but to start, we'll just print something to test. Uh, so we'll do fi file number, and then we'll just do hello world. So we're gonna print hello world, but instead of having a message box pop up, pop up we're gonna put that right in our file. Finally, we can go ahead and close the file number. We can end the if, and that will be the end of our function. So um, we'll open the dialog. If they did in fact choose a file, then we will go ahead and save um, the text hello world in that file. So we can go ahead and save that now, do a little lit litmus test and see if that works. So we'll go, you can see it opens up. Uh, it's got my local disk here. It's only allowing me to save a JSON file. I'm going to save it as hello, and it's going to save as hello.json, even though I know we didn't put valid JSON code into it. Let's go ahead and find it on our disk. And there's hello.json. We should be able to open it up with Adam. A little slow. Okay, we see there's like hello world in there. So we know that our little bit of text that we put in there worked. The other thing you might want to check is, okay, we opened the dialog. Actually, I decided I didn't want to do that just then. I canceled it. Just make sure you didn't get any sort of weird error or anything. The, the execution of the macro should just stop at that point. All right, so that's cool. We can open a save dialog, pick a file, and save it. Uh, that's actually quite a bit of functionality for writing only just a few lines of code here. Uh, VBA is not super verbose, um, which is nice. It comes with a lot of really simple functions like get save as file name that you know allows you to go through the whole open save dialog and get the file path process really, really simply, which is just awesome. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and actually get the data that we're gonna pick. Now, I'm going to have my macro automatically pick the first table in the active sheet, meaning you can't really use it with more than one table in the sheet. You could come up with something more complicated if you're familiar with VBA. If you're not super familiar with VBA, this is kind of the first time you're playing around with it. Um, I would go ahead and stick with what I'm doing. It should work for most cases. So what we're going to do is the first thing we need to do is so JSON, we kind of have to determine how we're going to save this to a JSON format. So the JSON format we're going to use is we're going to have an array. So each row is going to be an array. And then these, it's going to have these properties. So the JSON is going to be structured like if I open a notepad here, we're going to start it off. Let's, let's make this pretty wacko big so you guys can see this here. Uh, let's go like this. So in JSON, we have the square brackets is going to denote an array. And then, so that's going to be like my top level object. And then in there, I'm going to have an object, which is denoted by a curly brace with like first name is Teresa or Tersa. And then last name is uh, Fullington. And then age is going to be like 43 um, and then like phone number uh, is going to be you know whatever it is it's 183 130 uh, 5288 
right? And then I'm going to close off that object. And so I'm going to need that first name, last name, age, phone number. That's every object I write is going to have those same properties, and those are going to be pulled from my header row up here. And then with the part that's going to change is I'm going to have obviously different information. So not everyone's first name is Thursa, Fullington. It's, it's got to match the row. But the properties are always the same. And in the JSON format, we're going to repeat those, right? So here we just have a simple header row. Well, we can't really do that with JSON. We've got to actually repeat them for every object. So keeping that in mind, we need to start by actually fetching this header row and temporarily, you know, storing it in in a method that's going to work for us. Um, to so you know we can match up like Wooster and say, okay, what what type of property is Wooster? Well, we know it's a last name. But when, when it's going through, it's got to know what label to give that. So we kind of got to store our labels based on what column they're for. And then when we get to like Bane, we can say, okay, what column did we just pull Bane from? Oh, we pulled it from two. What's the label for column for column two? The label for column two is last name. So we got to be able to pull that out. So we're going to start by saying set object properties is going to be create object scripting dot dictionary and uh, I should probably stop there because we have to add a reference to get this to work so we go up to tools references we find Microsoft scripting runtime and we check it off and then the other thing we want to do is we want to go file import file I'll have the download link for this below. It's called VBA JSON. I got mine here. You want to find this JSON converter.basic file and open that. And it'll kind of open like behind the scenes. You see it opens in your modules. Um, but that's going to allow us to actually convert these things to JSON. So we're going to create a dictionary. A dictionary object is an object of key value pairs. Um, so in this case, we're going to use the column index as the key. So Again, when I said, you know, we get to Daniel here, we want, how do we know to that Daniel is a first name? Give it that label. We can, well, we can know that it would match up with the, with the label for the first, with the header uh, row item in column one. So that's how we can know about that. So now I need to fill up this dictionary. So I'm going to do a for each C, so cell in active sheet so that'll get whatever sheet is active when we call this um, macro so it won't go to other sheets dot list objects that's gonna get me a list of all the tables I'm gonna pick the first one I'm gonna do header row range so the header row basically uh, dot cells so it's gonna select basically these four cells okay and so I want to say for each one of those cells I want to add that in as a object property. So I want to do object properties dot add and I'm going to add C dot column and C dot value. Okay. So the column is how we're going to match that up later and the value is what we're actually going to use as the property value. Uh, to end this for each loop, I'm simply going to say next. Okay. Then we need to go through all of the non-header rows with another loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dim collection to JSON. This is going to be the array that we're actually going to convert to JSON as new collection. So a collection and an array are similar things if you're familiar with those. Basically it's just a list, okay guys? And I'm going to go through again, except this time I'm going to be going through each row and then through each s column in the row. Okay, so it's going to be a nested for loop here. This is called. We're going to do for each row in active sheet dot list objects one dot list rows. So that excludes the header row automatically. So no need to worry about that. We'll say set JSON object is equal to create object scripting dot dictionary. So this is going to create a dictionary just like we did above to store our properties. Now 
we're actually going to create a dictionary for each individual row, okay? And it's going to be converted to JSON as an object, as I mentioned. Collections get converted to arrays. So collections are just a list of values, whereas this is a list of keys and values, okay? Then we're going to say for each cell or column in R dot range dot cells. So for each cell or each column in the row in those cells I want to say JSON object dot add object properties okay so I want to add and I'm gonna pull from my my previous dictionary okay the column based on the column so object property C column what this is going to do is get me the appropriate header item. So if I have Maddie, it's going to return first name. If I have Tilly, it's going to return first name. If I have Bane, it's going to return last name. If I have 18, it's going to return age. If I have phone number, it's going to return phone number. Okay. So that's what that's going to do. And then we just want to pass in, of course, alongside it, we want to pass the value that we're going to put in. So this is the key. That's that property name or the header item in the row that we stored in our dictionary up here. That's how we can get that based on the column. And we're gonna put the actual value of the cell in alongside that. Okay, we're gonna do a next statement. And when we're done the row, so again, this is happens for each row, then we go through each of the cells. When we're finished the row, we're ready to move on to the next row. We're gonna do collection to JSON dot add JSON object to add that new object which is stored as a dictionary in VBA but will be printed out to JSON as an object in that array okay cool that's basically all we need to do the final thing to do here is instead of writing hello world we actually need to write our newly created JSON array so what we can do is we can say JSON converter dot convert to JSON you can see it's giving me autocomplete so that's great news that means the library was imported correctly we're gonna do a convert to JSON and we're gonna pass it that collection to JSON that we used so a lot of coding there nothing's highlighted in red so that's good news but we'll have to go ahead and check it out and see if it does in fact save our file or if we did make an error so let's go ahead and press our button and hello.json, I do know, by the way, guys, this will overwrite the file. It won't append to it or anything, so no worries about that. But I'm just going to go ahead and select it again. I'm going to click Save. And we're going to open it. This time we should see some actual JSON content. All right, beautiful. So you can see, and I know there's a space behind Theresa, but that's actually how it appears in the Excel file. It's just not really as noticeable when you're looking at it that way. We see some beautiful JSON content. This is great if you're gonna like import it into an API or something, which is probably what you're gonna do with JSON realistically. You're probably not just gonna sit there and look at the file. But if you did wanna make this file a little easier on the, on the eyes, what we can do is we can change the function to add some white space. So you can just add in here, colon equals white space. And then you could do two or four, whatever you prefer, two is enough for me. It's just two spaces is gonna be the indent. So we'll, um, uh, sorry, really bad guys. White space colon equals two. I don't, I don't know why I mixed that up, but uh, you add some white space in there and then it will look like an actual human readable JSON file. So we'll save it again. We'll do that. And now if I open it up in Atom, it should actually show white space. Perfect. So you can see it's like using new lines now and stuff. It's a little bit easier to read. Um, and this is the format in JSON. So I hope the video was helpful, you guys. There's a lot of features you could do to add or expand on this macro, but it's a pretty simple way to save files as JSON. So it's a great library. I use it in my Excel Google Maps video as well. Um, but this is the first time I've shown you how to save a file with it. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you guys are struggling, I'll have the complete code available on my website. So you don't have to try and copy it from the video. You can just go down to my website where I have this complete code available for your reference and maybe my reference too. 
Uh, anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe if you found the video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.